Zelensky got in on the debate with a poll of his own, simply asking whether people prefer Elon Musk who supports Ukraine or one who supports Russia, with 79% siding with the president. The Kremlin, perhaps unsurprisingly, praised Musk's proposal, saying it is very positive that someone with the profile of the SpaceX billionaire is looking for a peaceful end to this brutal conflict. And with reports that Putin is planning for a nuclear test on Ukraine's border in a sign of possible escalation, is Musk's suggestion that Ukraine give up on land to end the war with Russia actually a valid one? For peace. Want to know what you think on this? Proved very controversial over the past 24 hours. Dan at GBNews.uk. Tweet me at GBNews while you're there. Go and vote in our poll. I'll bring you the results shortly. But first to debate this now, I'm joined by the former advisor to Ukraine's Foreign Minister Cormac Smith and the social commentator and author Adrian Hayes. So Adrian Hayes, you're actually with the new owner of Twitter on this. You think he's making a valid point? Uh, thanks, Dan. Uh, um, firstly, I'm very pleased he's taken over Twitter as well. Oh my goodness, I know. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! <laughs> Let me let me put a context and good evening, uh, Conor, uh, Cormac as well, and your viewers. Good evening. There's a there's there's an assumption that military people, or ex-military people like myself, I was an ex-Gurkha officer, are bellicose and stand up to Putin, all these things. And my view on that is that you know choose your battles. Uh, I believe in put a context. We were wrong to go in Af- Iraq. We are wrong to go in Afghanistan. We are wrong to to depose Gaddafi. And I think we'd be wrong to be drawn into a protect, protracted war in Ukraine as we are now. And let's be honest, politicians have always used wars for other vested interests to look strong on the world stage uh, or to divert attention from domestic problems, which I think is what all these uh, examples show. Um, the thing with Ukraine, and actually, first thing, I, I'm, I'm just amazed that nobody Nobody has called for peace talks up until now, until, until Elon Musk has said it last, last night. And it, this comes to my whole thing. You know, what exactly? And I've, I've been so, I'm an objective-driven guy in my coaching work and everything like this. And I see it all, everything. What exactly are we trying to achieve in Ukraine? Now, if people say it's to stop um, Putin invading other countries in Western Europe, whatever, I, let me just show, to prove I'm not a weed-smoking pacifist, putting drums around the thing, I would say if clear warnings to Putin, if he invades any Baltic, Baltic states or Poland, it's all out war. And I would say the same to China if it was um, an invasion of Taiwan. So I'm not a pacifist. But what are we trying to achieve in, in, in Ukraine? Because if the objective is to defeat Vladimir Putin, I think we're on a hiding to nothing. He will never be defeated by military force. I'm pro- so pleased that anything else that, that Zelensky in Ukraine is fighting back, but I just don't think he can be defeated. The only people who can defeat Putin is his own people. Uh, Cormac, you say that Musk is a useful idiot at best as a result of this suggestion. Dan, good evening, and Adrian, good evening. Yes, I said he's a useful idiot at best and a Kremlin asset at worst. I actually go for a useful idiot who's driven by his own ego. Look, his suggestions of yesterday on Twitter have been as obnoxious as they were ludicrous. Um, to suggest that Ukraine... Oh, and by the way, um, Adrian, you were wrong. There were peace talks brokered by um, 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 Turkey um, very, very shortly after the outbreak of this war, which the um, Ukrainian delegation were led by Dmitry Kaleba, the foreign minister, and the Russian de- delegation were led by um, Sergei Lavrov. Um, memorably, um, they ended, um, I know because I went on um, Sky to um, be interviewed um, about them at the time. Sorry, it was Channel 5. But memorably, they um, broke up with nothing achieved. Memorably, in the Turkish ones, which were the second set, Lavrov came out and denied that Russia was even in Ukraine. This is a country that lies on an industrial scale as part of its, of its, uh, of its hybrid war toolkit. Um, to go back to what we're trying to achieve in Ukraine, this is the most diabolical um, act of aggression against a, against a peaceful, democratic country on European soil since 1939 to 1945. Putin and his cronies have made it very clear that they do not think Ukraine has the right to exist. They are carrying out, and it has been recognized by numerous countries, they are carrying out genocide on the Ukrainian people. Whole cities have been wiped off the face of the earth. Um, They are raping not just women, but children and babies. And they are doing this on a systematic basis, um, not just the, um, um, the, the, the rare actions of, 
of of ill disciplined troops. So you know, um, there's, there's okay, Cormac. I understand, I understand that, Cormac. Can I just cut in and ask you a question quickly? Because mm. a lot of people have huge sympathy for what you're saying, but the problem is, Cormac, and you will have looked at the polls here in the UK that show an increasing number of Brits are worried about the economic consequences to a never-ending war. And there doesn't seem to be any sort of end game in sight. Well, actually, you're wrong there. There is an end game in sight, and the Ukrainians are currently making um, huge progress. It's quite simple. If we stand, if we stand by Ukraine, if we double down on the um, armaments, if where we have a long way to go, we're still not giving them all the heavy armaments that they need. And if we double down on the sanctions, which are affecting them, but a good friend of mine, Alexei Mikheyev, is the is the um, has been for the last seven months their their um, special representative on sanctions. There is a lot more we can do there. The third thing, of course, we have to do in the West is not be cowed by um, Putin's ridiculous um, um, nuclear okay, well, threat. Me, I want but to actually, there clearly, to there clearly is an end game. We clearly can. This war can be won by the Ukrainians. And in fact, if I can finish off, Dan, to say mm -hmm. it must be won by the Ukrainians. Again, to quote a good friend of mine, Oleksii, he said, if, you, if Russia stops fighting, there is no war. If Ukraine stops fighting, there is no war. Ukraine. We have okay. seen the evidence of genocide, okay. which is being carried Very out. Very powerful. We have both a moral. We have both a moral and a mm -hmm. um, and and it's in our own interest to make okay. sure you, that Putin is stopped in Ukraine. Cormac, absolutely understand uh, where you're coming from. So, Adrian, how do you respond to that? Well, look, I wouldn't dispute anything that Cormac says about Russian aggression and and the evilness of what they've done. But we got it wrong at the beginning. I mean, one of the military principles is surprise. Russia was building up its forces on the border for weeks and weeks and months. And I think I don't personally think that he had made his mind up to invade. He was just testing the waters. And it was Biden's in, tacit that a limited incursion would be accepted that I think gave him the green light. So we've got a problem there that, that we cause this from our own making to a degree, to a degree. Please don't jump in. But the other thing, and Cormac, you know, the problem with them, why, one of the reasons why I believe Russia went in is because of the Russian-speaking majority in the eastern part of Ukraine, the Donbass. He knows he's got that popular um, support there. And what Musk is proposing, a UN rerun of that referendum to see what, would, what, uh, what people would want in there, I, I just, again, I just say, I, to me, it's the only way out of this. And just to say, finally, you know, Zelensky has been a fantastic leader. He has been the, the best leader we've, we've, we've seen in the Western world for some quite, quite some years. But leadership is also is about reading the room and being aware of when you've got to be flexible, when you may have to change. And there's no single objective. This is what we've got. There's, everything's a trade-off. And, you know, F.W. de Klerk saw it in South Africa. Mikhail, Mikhail Gorbachev saw it in, in the Soviet Union. They recognized that the end game was up. And I think Zelensky could go down as an absolute hero if he's prepared to just compromise on this, this, on these, this standoff. And it will help the whole world. Uh, okay. Thank